Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. It is February the 24th, and I want to thank you for the, where I think we were like 150 people on our Clubhouse event this morning. Uh, Clubhouse is an app that Julie and I are pretty geeked up about. If you have access to it, if you have an iPhone, please do join us every morning on our Clubhouse event, and uh, you can just search for us on the search bar, and you'll find the, uh, the invite. And uh, yeah, so it's working out to be a bit of a pre-show to the podcast, which is great because we get to hear a lot. We have a lot of really great in-depth coaching type conversations with top agents around the country. So if you are um, clubhouse curious, as most people seem to be nowadays, it's in the news all over the place. It's the fastest growing social app ever, faster, grow, fast, growing faster than even Facebook. Um, it's invite only at this point. And, um, you know, if but I will encourage all of you to go to clubhouse on your iPhones, download the app, and then at least register your names. It's going to be one of those things when it goes public that's going to shock everyone. It's a really, really cool app. And you know Julie and I very, very rarely advocate for any social networking <laughs> yeah. apps. So for us to say we like it is because we really do think it's great. It's excellent at disseminating information at a very high level, and you can communicate directly with a lot of people. You don't have to go through a lot of you know virtual uh, filters like you do through all the other social apps, at least at this point until they screw it up and try to make it into something. Um, that it, it probably will end up being, which is a big media mess. But for now, it's a really cool app. Um, so it's called Clubhouse. And moving forward, one of the things that we are seeing and um, experiencing out for, through you guys is the huge amount of headwinds and consternation from being a buyer's agent. We talk about this as a recurring theme in everything we do in our book and our, you know, Her- called Harris Rules and our podcast, Coaching Clients. A lot of people discover Julie and I because they want to learn how to be powerful listing agents. So if you're finally tired of essentially being the punching bag of the real estate market, aka just working with buyers, it's time for you to seriously consider being a listing agent. Being a listing agent, there's it gives you leverage. Being a listing agent um, allows you to basically have consistent cash flow. Being a listing agent is what the real estate treasure map is all about. The output of the real estate treasure map, which we want to give to you, um, is just determining what your real estate magic number is. And your real estate magic number is simply the map number of listings you need at all times to meet or exceed your financial, um, you know, your dreams, your goals, your obligations. And if you want a free copy of the real estate treasure map, simply text 2021 to 855 685 1045. Text 2021 to 855 685 1045. And when you do, we're going to text you back a link. Click the link, and then you can download the real estate treasure map as well as Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate and a lot of other great books. So, Julie, yes. you titled this something that I'm not going to use, but I get your point. <laughs> the, Julie's yeah. notes were, for the love of God, be the listing agent. So, we're going to. Well, those are my thoughts lately. At least you used capital G. I and, did. Yes. And we're, not, uh, and we're going to uh, obviously rename it. But, yes, I mean, isn't that really the recurring theme? You've. You're famous for saying basically working with buyers is physical labor and working with sellers is uh, really mental and uh, skills-based or mental labor, and that's definitely true. Mm-hmm. But now the direction the market's going, buyer's agents are going to start needing oh, to yeah. have the same sales skills and presentation skills as a listing agent. Yes, and I, I think that there's a level of shock and awe and surprise and outrage from <laughs> buyer's agents like, how, how did it get this hard this fast, Right. I see it from, I mean, I hear it on coaching calls. People text me. We get emails. I watch what happens on some of the realtor, you know, places that they post. And I saw a funny picture that reminded me to make sure we drilled down on this, which was they were comparing Barbies, right? The listing agent Barbie versus the buyer's agent Barbie. And listing agent Barbie's like got the glamour shot, beautiful dress, sunglasses in her hair. And then the buyer's (laughs) agent like had a mask dangling from her face. Her hair looked like the cat chewed on it. And she had like torn jeans and stuff. And, you know, what's the better lifestyle right now? I think people on the buyer side know that the listing agent always wins. Well, one of the things, again, on our Clubhouse event, make sure you guys uh, attend that. One of the things that we are really deep diving into, and you've been doing a great job um, keeping on 
the forefront is all the uh, essentially the headwinds that's sort of at this very pres- at this moment is destroying essentially a lot of uh, agents' businesses that were only based on selling houses to buyers. Yes. We're seeing, and Julie and I have been warning you guys about on this podcast for at least two years, maybe three years, that we saw the low-hanging fruit as far as what the tech companies were going to try to um, eliminate would be the buyer agent commissions. And we talked about this exhaustively on this podcast, but obviously all of our... Um, All of our prognostications are playing out. Julie and I have been telling you guys, focus all your best energies on becoming listing agents. Get off the hamster wheel of buying buyer leads. Stop being so opportunistic or more specifically, stop being the bug that's uh, attracted to the, the zapper light and then start focusing on developing skills so you can actually have a real business. And you won't have to basically succumb to all the uh, downward pressures on buyer's agents' commissions. And then we noticed late last year, but definitely this year, the everybody is going after the buyer agent commissions. Not just the I buyers, but now savvy sellers. Yes, there is such an abundance of evidence. And you guys that are out there in the field know this because you're experiencing it. And I, I just wanted to go through all of the different directions that are eroding your buyer side commissions, not just the I buyer. I mean, the I buyer is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. So let's do that. And then I also wanted to, at the end, I don't know if you scanned out at the bottom, but I also wanted to promise them, even though this theme is about be the listing agent, the listing agent always wins. We also are going to do a series of podcasts about all the different strategies for you to use on on the buyer side so that you win, ideally none of them being losing your commission. Right. Okay. And, and again, so the losing of your commission option, that's something that we're seeing a lot of pain in, the, in some of these hot seller markets. And if you're in a marketplace right now uh, that's not being affected by this, you can pretty much assume because of the speed of information flowing on the internet, you're soon going to have sellers that are going to start maybe asking as if you're a yeah. buyer's agent. Uh, you're gonna. You, if you want your offer accepted, you may go over offer. You may have an all cash buyer. You may waive your inspection. You may waive your appraisal. You may, you know, all these things. The every single possible advantage that you can give your buyer in a purchase offer is going to be offered. But then that seller might come back to you and say, reduce your buyer's agent commission because that's pretty much what's left. And that's what's left. And that's what we're seeing in these hot sellers markets. And of, obviously, we're also seeing these i buyers that are essentially starting out by offering commissions, co op commissions. You know around a point and a half in many markets. This is the new reality when you're basically on the buyer agent, low skill side of the business. You need to migrate all your best energies to becoming listing agents. Believe us now or believe us in a year if this market continues to tighten in favor of sellers when the buyer agent commissions become a dollar amount, a thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. What are you going to do then? If there's not a lot of houses for the buyers to choose from and you have a buyer that wants to buy the house and there is a one dollar co-op, what are you going to do? Not write the contract. I mean, you guys getting the point here? Become the listing agent. It's not getting any easier. Okay. So here's a list of things that are actually going on. And this is not just a a fluke scenario. This is going on consistently. It doesn't really matter what market you're in. I think the only spinoff I would say is probably Manhattan. Um, And there are a few other pockets, but I'd say 90% of the country um, is reporting this type of thing. So all right, developments on the buyer side. Point number one, we just talked about buyers. Well, we didn't look at it this way. This this is just, I think, an act of desperation. Uh, number one, buyers, agents volunteering to chip in some or all of their commission just to win a competitive bidding scenario. That's happening. Point number two, listing agents reducing buyer side commissions in the MLS. And boy, are agents outraged over that one. But, it ha- you know, it happens. It, it's it's happened in certain markets. It has been more negotiable than others. But now it's it's kind of taking root in uh, markets that had been pretty consistent. Well, without talking about commission rates, obviously, yeah. one that's always happened. It was not uncommon for when Julie and I were selling real estate for there to be a, uh, you know, the commission where the bulk of it was going to the listing agent. And what, is, what are you going to do on the buyer agent side? You can be outraged all you want. But at yeah. the end of the day, you have no control of what your pay is going to be if you're on the buyer side of the transaction. Action. And if you want to know where the punchline of all this is going to be, this is just a reaction to the market as it is. And Julie and I were talking about this in the clubhouse this morning. The um, We were driving back from uh, Las Vegas to Laguna Beach. We were doing spooky, speaking events out west. And this was back in like 2008, probably. And we were driving through Victorville, California. And in Victorville, California, we actually saw a billboard that was on that major road, I-10 or whatever the heck it is. 15, going from, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Going from uh, Vegas to California. As we saw a big billboard 
billboard from a builder that says, if you buy one of my houses, I'll give you another for free. So it's basically a buy one, get one free. And that was not a joke. Right. And there's and, and when the market shifts back towards buyers, you're also going to see commissions increase, not decrease. So this is proof that there is no such thing as a set commission. It is really driven by market forces. So what's going on right now is probably on the extreme edge of what happens in an yeah. incredibly hot seller's market. I should hope so. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, I I think this is going to continue for quite some time. So ignoring Definitely. this would be, you know, uh, career suicide, I think. All right. So we speaking of what you just said, point number three, builders are reducing buyer side commissions sometimes to zero percent. Yes, that's a sliding scale. Okay. Check before you show. Know what you're signing up for. Point number four, listing agents slash sellers asking the buyer's agent to chip in or eliminate their buyer side commission during the negotiations so that they will accept that offer. That's absolutely happening. Point number five, buyers having to be asked to pay out of pocket for buyer agent commissions. Why are agents uncomfortable about that one? Buyers being asked to pay you out of pocket, you know, your commission. Let's hover right there for a second. Um, so only in California, I'm sorry, California, only in the United States and Canada, and I think maybe New Zealand, I'm not really sure, mm -hmm. is there an automatic entitlement to a buyer's agent commission, meaning that only in those few areas on planet Earth, I don't know about Mars or Venus, they might do things completely mm -hmm. different, um, is that where you have a commission that's being paid for the buyer's agent and the seller's agent by the seller. That's an abnormal thing. That is not how it works in the rest of the world. So what we, and again, this is going to be, this is already baked in, but there's going to become a time in your future that if you do not know how to present to a buyer why you are worth the commission that um, you are asking the buyer to pay, you might not actually get the house. You might not actually get the sale. The buyer uh, is not going to choose to work for you w with you. The buyer is going to go directly to the seller or the listing agent. Or sorry. And that's the way it works in the rest of the world. Basically, there's brokers. They have listings. If that broker doesn't have any listings you want, Mr. Buyer, you move on to the next one. And in this type of market, that is definitely where the trend seems to be in a lot of the hottest markets. Miami now for single family homes is definitely uh, on fire on our clubhouse event this morning. People are just, a lot of people from Miami were talking about how crazy the market is down there. And a lot of Julie's points actually came from where we're seeing the markets change the quickest then, you know, so this is the canary in the coal mine. These points are telling you what's happening in these hot markets that might be happening in your market sometime soon. Yes. Yeah, so let's see. Point number six, buyers are asking to finance the buyer side commission into their loan. And I think that this varies from area to area, what's allowable. And it also greatly varies from client to client, because if you're, you know, a 3% down FHA buyer, you're probably not going to get anything anyway. But the lender's probably not going to allow you to do that. Actually, they do. And do they? that's now, so I don't, I remember this very clearly. This is mm -hmm. back when you and I sold real estate. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when the ABR thing became really popular? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was then that Fannie Freddie changed the regulations that did allow the Buyer's Agents Commission to be uh, financed ah, into the contract. Okay. But Julie, that was back in that probably the late, late 90s or the early, early, you know, double yes. O's. So in that era, that was something I remember hearing about it, reading about it, thinking that this must be the, uh, the start of a possible trend where the sellers aren't going to be obligated to pay the buyer's agent's commissions anymore. It never actually happened. And I don't know, truthfully, whether it's still financeable as yeah, part of the Yeah, that's something that I but have it, to investigate. But it might yeah. be. And mm -hmm. if it is, that's the solution. That is a but, killer solution. But then you're yeah. going to have to basically go and be able to present professionally to that buyer why you are giving them an extra whatever your percent is. Be careful, percents, lady. I know. Whatever your percent is. And you're going to have to be able to rationalize to that or you know, essentially sell to that buyer why you're worth the extra amount of money. And if there's not a lot for sale and the buyer just says, well, I could have seen the houses that you're going to show me anyway. Why don't I just go directly to the listing agent? You're going to be a disadvantage. Gets back to the original point of today's uh, presentation and probably tomorrow's, which is? Be the listing agent. Okay. And you don't have all this drama. That's okay? right. You can shed all of that. All right. So let's see. Uh, point number seven, what you just said, buyers getting sick of losing and going directly to the listing agent. There's a lot of that going on. Listing agents are loving that. And I do see more dual agency out there than I've ever seen before. And the buyer agents, look, you guys aren't wrong saying that dual agency is not necessarily going to give the buyer the same representation of, say, for example, them being represented by somebody who's truly negotiating for them. It just makes sense that that's going to you know, produce a better outcome for the buyer. But in a market like this, it doesn't really matter because the sellers control everything. But who really controls everything are the listing agents. So again, guys, these in many markets, these points that we're making are just going to intensify. If you're in, um, you know, Murphy, North Carolina, where Julie and I have a home, which is a wonderful, gorgeous, 
absolutely probably one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. Um, you might not experience these things today, but in six months, you pretty much can be guaranteed you will. And those of you guys who are in other parts of the market or other parts of the country where you're seeing, like, for example, Charleston, South Carolina, you know, you're seeing all these towns in Texas. I've been telling you guys that Julie and I found a great article that was about uh, Joshua Tree, um, you know, which is a place in uh, California up in the high mountains that it's pretty much incredibly hot all the time. It's the desert except for these amazing cactuses called Joshua Trees. Um, that area has never been developed residentially. And guess what's happening now? It's getting developed residentially. People are leaving the high density, high cost, um, more urban and suburban areas, and they're moving away from the centers, the centers of the cities around the country, around the world. And, and obviously there's a lot of technology that's enabling that to happen and all kinds of things we talk about in other podcasts. But the moral of the story is, is they're going to bring with them their expectations of how real estate's supposed to be done based on their experiences in this very competitive, densely populated urban area. So you have somebody who has a single family house and they basically were selling in a Miami type market of a you know single family home and they're moving to say Murphy, North Carolina. They're going to, you know, they, and their experience was this is how real estate is now done and Murphy's not doing it that way yet. Well, you can pretty much be guaranteed that those people are going to bring their experience transacting in more competitive markets to your market. And the next thing you know, that means that your market's going to shift. Or if you're smart and you're in a Murphy, North Carolina area or any of these other wonderful areas around the country, you're going to be building your business in anticipation of the change so you're not caught by surprise. Yes, that's right. And so, you know, our uh, Texas agents, I would say, Cal I'm sorry, uh, like Nashville, Tennessee, and Florida, they would already attest to that because of the influence of people moving out of California there. Specifically California. Specifically. And, and so mostly, especially the Texas agents, they're like, well, I mean, California agents our California buyers must be really used to going way over list. And, you know, there historically that, that's true. But that's an excellent point, Julie, mm -hmm. because if you're in, you know, we over talk about Austin because we have so many great coaching clients there. But if you are in Austin, Texas, and you're over, you're over asking, uh, you know, mental, emotional threshold is 25 grand. And because you're working with a local buyer, you say, well, look, we go 25 grand over. That's going to show the seller we're serious. But if you're competing against a California offer and they're willing to go substantially more, you're going to lose that house every Every single then time. They're, they're built, it's baked in that they're more comfortable with that. Julie told a great story on Clubhouse this morning about one of her, um, tell them about the million over. Well, yes. So I've got a collection of those stories coming in. Um, house had been on the market for a while. This is in Austin and wasn't the best curb appeal in the world. Had had some showings, but it had been on the market a while. This is not a story about a fresh new hot listing. And, you know, a few showings happened la a couple weeks ago. And then an offer of more than a million dollars over. This was a $4.5 million listing, and it sold for five point six. Well, how does that happen? Well, a couple of things kind of converged. Excuse me. It was the last listing uh, available in a very hot neighborhood. The buyers had lost out and been outbid several times in that neighborhood. And finally, they had had it. And they said, you know what? Uh, and yes, they're from California. Um, and they said, you know, I'm going to write the seller an offer that there's no way they can refuse. And that was a million over. So that's pretty amazing. And that's not the only story like that. We've seen some things and this is this is right in your wheelhouse of becoming a powerful listing agent. You guys all should be really heavily going after expireds from two well, or three years ago. Let's tell our own personal story. Yeah. When Julie and I were looking for a place in Murphy, um, and this is just a little summer home for us. And so we were, uh, we'd been looking on and off, you know, it, physically there and, on, you know, obviously online. And we noticed that housing, the prices of the homes that were similar to what we were looking for were escalating quickly. And we were talking to the listing agents and indeed the list, the buyers were not just from the usual uh, ancillary markets of like Asheville or say, for example, Atlanta. They were tar starting to tell stories about people coming down from the more expensive areas the on the East Coast, Coast and things like that. So indeed what was happening in even this very isolated area of the world in that central Appalachia area around uh, Murphy, they were seeing the influx of these, um, you know, essentially all cash buyers that were, at, they had basically conditioned themselves to pay full asking, if not over. Mm -hmm. So when we stumbled across this property that we ended up buying, and I remember we told the listing agent, very, very sweet professional gal, yes, fantastic. You should give her a plug. I will. Uh, Bonnie Dupree in 
uh, Murphy, North Carolina. There you go. So, and she was very professional, very helpful, great real estate agent. But we told her, she said, well, this, you know, it, what do you guys want to offer? And Julie and I said, well, for asking price. Now, could we have gotten it a little bit cheaper? Maybe. But we happen to know there are probably at least three or four buyers out there that are also looking for the same thing we were looking for. Well, and the thing that we had looked at the day before had already gone pending. Right. I mean, we literally were watching daily inventory disappear and prices go up. Yep. And, and, that- and this is like you know, not metro or urban in no, any way. This, this, this is out there, man. Right. It, this is like, you heard- <laughs> You as gotta the, work for it. This is two hours as the as the crow flies from the nearest, like I, <laughs> we're going back up there this summer. And uh, I was saying, and Julie's like, should we be buying stuff before we get there and shipping it from Amazon? I said, no, Julie, we'll just go to the local Costco. <laughs> local Costco is 90 minutes away. I know. Isn't right? That Isn't that funny? what you told yeah, me? Yeah. yeah. It's like 65 miles or something. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, still, you can... But that tells you how basically isolated it is. But you can live there now. And, and just something else, just because we got around the bend here. Yep. But the, um, like, uh, Starlink, Elon Musk's satellite sure. thing. I've been hearing more and more people here in Puerto Rico, where we live, mm-hmm. uh, talking about the fact that they're getting on the wait list and it's supposed to be coming, did I tell you this? End no. of this year. Great. <laughs> and so the, the upload-download speed of the Starlink satellites is incredible. So once you're able to get these yeah. Starlink satellites everywhere, you're going to see a sea change in how humans live and where they live. So most the most isolated places, like what we're pointing out to you guys today, they are going to become alternatives to living in where you've been conditioned to think you have to live for the sake of employment. Because your employers are going to allow you flexibility of where you're going to live. Maybe you're smart and you're selling real estate in multiple markets in multiple states right now. I mean, there's all kinds of incredible opportunities that are right at your fingertips. Just open your mind. And I have to say, this is part of the renaissance theory, the uh, post-COVID renaissance theory that Julie and I work on on our Sunday special special podcast. So Mrs. Harris, yes. I have to round the bend because I have to get to a coaching okay, call. Okay, shall we save a few of these points for tomorrow? Yeah, we'll have to save a few okay. of these points for tomorrow. Sounds so good. Well, meet- get to work and be the listing agent is our conclusion here. That's right. And you guys can always, by the way, request a free coaching call by going to freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Or frankly, you'll get a free coaching call offer if you text 2021 to 855-685-1045. Someone from our team will call you and offer you a free coaching call with one of our new member coaches. That is the fast track for you be- to become a listing listing agent. Or of course, you can hop over to timandjulieharris.com and uh, look at, you know, obviously just click on coaching and become a premier coaching member. That's the greatest, easiest path for most of you uh, is just to join our premier coaching program. It's timandjulieharris.com. You have the mic up to your mouth as if you want to yeah, say something. Well, if you do it now, I can see you on the Facebook live that, that uh, me and coach Rochelle do every day at it's noon on the East coast. So if you act now, you can be on that Facebook live this afternoon. That's right. And remember, we are absolutely positively yes 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 interested in sponsoring you at exp realty so if you want to be part of julie and i's exp realty group if you want julie harris and tim harris to personally sponsor you you simply have to text me on my private cell phone and yes it is my private cell phone i know some of you text just to seeing if it's real you do not have to just you know text it and then not respond back just text me directly at 512-758-0206 512-758-0206 and when you do we will follow up and we'll have a conversation and we'll move forward assuming EXP is the right fit for you, which I can pretty much guarantee you it will be. But let's explore that option together. Uh, 512-758-0206. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.